You might think that Subway's collapse is all about Jared Fogel and that scandal that I can't say what it is about because YouTube will demonetize us. To a degree, you'd be right, but that's just scratching the surface of how Subway became the largest fast food chain in the US and then collapsed. While researching this video, we really had to ask ourselves where to start because it's that bad. So let's dive into Subway and their story in this episode of Company Forensics. Subway's Origins. Back in the 60s, a 17-year-old Fred DeLuca came up with the idea of healthy fast food. Plus, it was a way for him to pay for medical school. So he convinced his friend, nuclear physicist Peter Buck, to lend him $1,000 to start the idea. And with the money and his mother also on board, DeLuca started Peter's Super Submarines. The name then evolved to Peter's Submarines and finally into Subway. And from the start, DeLuca had this vision rapid growth. So after opening the first store, he worked hard at expanding to nearby locations. By 74, the first Subway franchise had already appeared out of state, and Subway had a lot going on for them. First, it was the only fast food chain offering something other than burgers and fries. Plus, the Luca believed visibility was vital, so most locations were in popular neighborhoods and city centers. And this philosophy helped propel popularity overseas. The first international Subway restaurant opened in Bahrain in 1984, the last place any chain would consider for fast food, as the small country was just recovering from a recent political turmoil. And the founders hadn't thought of it. Instead, a Bahrain businessman proposed the idea and it was appealing. If Subway succeeded in Bahrain, then the business model could work anywhere, quite literally. And Bahrain was a hit. Subway's menu allowed for versatility and ingredients that worked on other markets. So both domestic and international expansions continued. Subway went from 100 locations in 78 to 1,000 locations in 87. That number grew to 5,000 locations by 1990. In 93 alone, Subway opened 1,100 locations and part of the growth was thanks to the Lucas vision. But there was another ingredient, a fresh expansion around the world. Subway reflected this healthier lifestyle. For example, the mere option of adding more veggies was unheard of around those days. Plus, they also added smaller sandwiches. So who in their right mind would do that? All the fast food chains were just going bigger. Well, Subway sold it as a healthier portion. And it was genius because it's cheaper, of course. Back in the 80s and 90s, the world wanted to be healthier. So these decades saw an increase in the popularity of light beverages and healthy foods, plus expandex and weird hairdos, but that's another story. Also, DeLuca and Buck had made it cheap to start a franchise, even today. Let's compare that to McDonald's. It costs from $116 to $263,000 to start a Subway franchise. McDonald's charges anywhere from $1 to $2.2 billion to open a location. So back in Subway's heyday, opening a franchise seems like the perfect business move, even if it charged higher fees than the competition once the operation was actually running. Still, higher operating costs didn't deter franchisees and at one point, Subway dominated the world. In the US alone, by 2013, it had 41% of the fast food sandwich market. And Subway was also the biggest franchise globally, even bigger than McDonald's, with more than 30,000 locations by 2003. So it seemed nothing could stop Subway. Plus, the company had genius marketing campaigns. The marketing moves that made Subway great. Eat fresh. The company's slogan was easier to understand and somewhat accurate. After all, Subway was fresher than other fast food chains. And then there was one promo in particular. Back in 2003, one franchisee noticed that during the week, hungry college students packed his restaurants, but during the weekends, it was empty. So he created the $5 footlong during the weekends. Of course, it was a big hit, so much so that other brands copied it, such as McDonald's and Wendy's. By the way, during the 2008 recession, people loved that $5 footlong and it propelled Subway's popularity all over the US. But it was one specific campaign that helped Subway reach a whole new level. In 98, a 425 pound university student named Jared Fogel started eating at Subway for three reasons. One, it was close to him, so he didn't have to walk too much. Two, the meals were affordable and tasty. And three, they were healthier than the other brands. In less than a year, he had lost more than half of his body weight, 245 pounds. And of course people took notice. So the university paper wrote an article on him and then that drew the attention of men's health. So the famous magazine included Fogel in the section, Stupid Diets That Work. So kind of a compliment, I suppose. Anyways, after Subway heard the story, the company jumped at the opportunity. And Jared Fogel made perfect sense. He was an ordinary dude who had become healthy thanks to Subway. Jared even showed his old jeans massive at a 16 inches waist all around the world. So the story was perfect for ads and Fogel became a celebrity. And Subway decided to ride this Jared wave hard. He was so popular that when 
A quick pause in ads featuring him happened in 2005, sales dropped 10%, and the relationship seemed perfect, but it wasn't. By 2010, Fogel had regained 40 pounds, and he seemed a little lost, so Subway tried to back him up. So the company used this as a narrative. They helped him get back in shape and run the New York City Marathon. Yes, he vowed never to do it again, but he had achieved it, and Subway was part of that story. Advertising campaigns like these turned the company into more of an icon, but things would turn sour in no time. So before we dive into that strategy, let's summarize the magic. In 2011, Subway had $11.5 billion in revenue. In 2013, it dominated the sandwich market, and at its peak, Subway was the biggest chain in the US with 27,000 locations, with McDonald's by comparison, just 15,000. But in 2014, everything changed. And before I tell you, I have this question for you. Have you ever looked at your calendar and seen this mess? This is my actual calendar. And as you can see, I don't get a lot of free time. Now, the sponsor of today's video is a Y Combinator graduate. It's called Taskade that helps teams level up their productivity and get work done faster and smarter in one unified workspace. When I have a bunch of to-dos and a bunch of ideas swimming around my head, it gets a lot harder to focus. So I turn to Taskade to sort of declutter my brain like a pensieve and document my thoughts so that I can fully focus on each task at hand and keep the others later. Taskit can be used by teams or by individuals to create checklists, mind maps, and workflows. Whether you're managing projects or planning future milestones, getting work done with Taskit is simple. You can collaborate with team members on the same page and edit projects together all in real time. And Taskit is free to use for individuals and for teams. You can sign up for free at taskit.com or using the link in the description. And for the first thousand people that use the code in the description, you'll get a 100, 100% off lifetime discount on your Taskade Pro subscription. So it's free forever for the first thousand people. Now, back to the video and the nasty part, the Fogel debacle. If you look at the numbers, 2013 and 2014 were the beginning of the end for Subway. In 2014, sales dropped 3% and continued dropping to 13% in 2020. And as a result, that famous market share shrunk from 41% to 28%. But why? Remember, I said that we didn't really know where to start. Well, we've reached that point in the video, so the best thing to do is just get the ugly out of the way. In 2014, reports surfaced that Jared Fogle had abused minors and had a shit ton of pornography in his computer. But they were only rumors, and that's until the FBI raided his house and found tons of material. So Fogle went to court. And things only got worse. You see, Subway had denied any knowledge of this. They tried like crazy to free themselves from the controversy, but they couldn't. Documents revealed that Fogel solicited underage sex from a Subway employee in 2008. The employee reported him, but the company washed its hands. Their excuse was that since Fogel wasn't an employee, they just couldn't do anything. But reports show that the company also silenced complaints about Fogel's behavior, such as propositioning minors at Subway events. In 2015, a court sentenced Fogel to 15 years in prison. While this did cause a significant dent in Subway's reputation, they managed to recover. After all, you know, if you have a good PR agency, a massive enterprise should be able to handle that. So it's just that Fogel wasn't the only issue. Subway's undertaker was its founder. Fred DeLuca was a visionary, and he was also quite a character, but unfortunately, he also had a reputation for chasing co-workers, wives, and girlfriends. One source even said that if you had a skirt and a pulse, he would chase you. What you do in your personal life shouldn't matter to the story, but we're mentioning it for a reason. After all, he did own the biggest fast food chain in the US. And let's just say that his management style was different. For example, he sent calendars with half-nude male executives, including himself, which has got to be one of the weirdest ways to promote team unity. At least, anyway, everybody hated the calendars. But it wasn't just about the weird calendars and hundreds of affairs. DeLuca had no vision for the future, not that he have a succession plan. All he cared about, it seems, was skirts and expansion. And that turned out to be a problem when he died. He lived for expansion, and Subway took the idea too far. Do you remember the high operating costs? Well, franchisees opened more stores to increase revenue, which is something that Subway actively pushed. But many of those times, they were so close to other existing locations that they were just cannibalizing themselves. Subway was effectively killing itself, fulfilling DeLuca's dream. The problems didn't end there. In its heyday, Subway allowed franchises to order local produce daily, but they changed the policy to once a week, twice if sales are high. So have you seen what happens to lettuce and tomatoes after a week? It's of course no good. Subway was butchering the very same items that made the company stand out with the whole eat fresh thing. The problem 
was that they weren't alone anymore. Other brands offered healthy sandwiches of much better quality with lettuce that wasn't a week old. So you would think Subway would update its menu, but it didn't. Instead, it remained almost unchanged for two decades, with the company only focused on growing, growing as in locations. Sure, it had tens of thousands of stores, but Subway also had an old-fashioned product, abusive business practices, and was unwilling to change. So by 2021, the brand couldn't keep up and had already closed 5,000 locations, and there were no signs of this slowing down. To make matters worse, Subway lacked leadership. After DeLuca died, rumors spread that his widow and the co-founder were desperate to cash out, knowing that the company wasn't doing well. And struggling to save itself, Subway had gone there are many CEOs. The latest is John Chidse, a ruthless former Burger King executive who has made a name for himself. He axed 500 corporate workers and had clashes with franchisees over the vision for the company. And as a result, there are rumors of a possible sale. And so we, of course, denies all of this and the future is uncertain for them. But at least we have learned a lesson. Sometimes it seems that growth, too much growth, is dangerous.